the first story I'm talking about today is social media censorship. And I've been talking about it for years. It's kind of crazy because before I get into it, in 2008, 2009 on YouTube, there were a bunch of conspiracy videos. They were talking about how Google and YouTube were gonna sell out the platform and kick out individual content creators. And I was like, oh man, that sounds like a crazy conspiracy video. No way that's gonna happen. I thought it was exaggerated, but it's crazy thinking about it now because those conspiracy videos weren't even as bad as what YouTube is doing. So it's like they've gone further than the craziest conspiracy of 2008. They have become corporate, they have become censored, and they do, uh, they've admitted it, and I'm gonna tell you in a few. But the first story I'm gonna talk about is Twitter. Because this is very interesting, and I love doing this, because I'm not, just to clear it up, I'm not anti-Vice, I'm not anti-Fox News, I'm not anti-Washington Post or New York Times. That's why when I see the New York Times or Washington Post or CNN do good work, you always see me share it. You always see me sharing Jake Tapper. I show Barack Obama. If people tell the truth, I will give you a platform. I don't care if it comes from CNN or Fox or whatever. It's just I don't see the truth very often from the left, and especially Vice. Seems like Vice has fallen into a rabbit hole of like race, religion, gender, sex, like, oh, we're gonna morph into like aliens or something. And I don't mean that disrespectfully. I just mean, I, I don't know what Vice is doing. Uh, they've lost me as a consumer. I'm not impressed by their news analysis, but today I am. That changes, and Vice, God bless you. If you do more work like this, I'll promote you more. Maybe we could work together, because I know you guys are, you know, you started from a cool source, and you guys do next level revolutionary stuff that a lot of news sources won't do, so God bless Vice. What Vice did was put out an article yesterday, very left-leaning, but they had an epiphany, or a worker there did some research, and they found out that Republicans and top Republicans, top conservatives were being shadow banned on Twitter. So this is left-leaning vice that just has a soul. And, and just before we really get into it, this is what I want. I don't care if you like Barack Obama. I don't care if you like Donald Trump. I don't care if you're liberal. I, I, I love that energy. I know what you mean. I love equality, freedom, all these things. But just be a decent person. That's all anybody really asks. And a lot of people on certain sides, they think they're above it. So it's beautiful, I just wanna be full of compliments today, to see Vice News, even though they don't agree with it politically, have a soul, have just a little bit of integrity and respect for freedom of speech and like conversation to be like, you know what, I don't agree with Republicans, but I'm gonna put out an article and call it like I see it, they're getting shadow banned. So what did they find out? Prominent Republicans, uh, such as the RNC chair, Trump Jr. spokesperson, and dozens upon dozens of conservatives weren't coming up in the search box on Twitter. So when you search anomaly or you search Donald Trump Jr., if you're, you know, I would, I should come up first. If you search Donald Trump Jr., Donald Trump Jr. should come up first. If you search the RNC chair's name, they should come up first. What was happening on Twitter is dozens of Republicans and conservatives, when you search their name, they don't even come up in the search box. So it's like, hmm, what's going on there? So what Vice then did, even though they're left-leaning, God bless you, Vice, for being a real person and finally standing up, uh, you know, and I don't mean to throw a sub blow, but I'm just saying, I'm gonna keep complimenting you. You do great work, I'll promote you every single day. Uh, they found out that they put in Democrats and not a single Democrat was banned. They said in the 78 person progressive caucus, as the, uh, the news article said, not a single Democrat from top chair members to everybody, not a single one was shadow banned. So Republicans and conservatives were being targeted and shadow banned and not a single person on the left was. And thank you again, I'm gonna be shower you with compliments. Thank you Vice for putting out this article. It elicited a response from Twitter's uh, team. Jack, the CEO of Twitter, retweeted one of his team members who basically their excuse was, our usage of behavior signals within search was causing this to happen. So Twitter said, oh, don't worry, we got it. We're sorry that was happening. So they essentially admitted, yes, you were being shadow banned, but no, 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 it's not because your political views, it's because uh, behavior signals within search. So. What exactly does behavior signals within search mean? Well, I do know something thanks to uh, James O'Keefe of Project Veritas, and I don't know that I like this type of investigative journalism. It's kind of sneaky recording people. I I'm not a big fan of it. But they got uh, one of the programmers from Twitter to basically admit, this was like last year, I believe, he admitted that they were already banning and shadow banning conservatives 
based on this whole Russian narrative and oh, if people support Trump, they're a Russian bot because like 70 people from Russia like Trump and we don't even know if that's really true, but according to these phony reports that really don't add up when it comes to like real uh, content there, you know, they say, oh, well, Russia, an American flag, and then they put out a great, you know, it's called, um, I believe, computer learning, where they put in an algorithm and they ban it based on certain words. So I, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe this is what he's talking about, where, oh, it's just behavioral signals within search. So they literally, on Twitter, they rig the algorithm so you don't go up, come up with search, but they do it on justification of like, if you say these keywords or you do this sort of profile picture, we think you're this type of person. It's a lot of labeling. It's a lot of, you know, uh, like really honing in on the things that the right wing does and a lot of times ignoring the things that, you know, fringe people on the left do. So these algorithms tend to do what Twitter admitted to doing, which is shadow ban conservatives and Republicans, not a single Democrat. And, and for me, even my least favorite person, whether they're on the right wing or the less left wing, I shouldn't have to shadow ban them, censor them, and destroy them in order to beat their argument. If you have to do that to win, maybe you're not that good. Maybe your argument's not that pure. And I do want to say this is not just a Twitter thing. This happens on Facebook and Google, and it's a fact. It's not a conspiracy theory. It's not Alex Jones. It's not, you know, whatever you, they want to say. Facebook admitted couple months ago to censoring Diamond and Silk. Diamond and Silk are two women, uh, African-American women who support the president. They're conservative. They're funny. They're a little bit, you know, blunt and, you know, they got a wild type of humor. Uh, but, you know, that's it. And Facebook, after six months, admitted to Diamond and Silk that they were being censored and they were being shadow banned because of, I don't know, maybe they were a danger to their community. I think something along those lines Facebook said, YouTube, the whole algorithm is already rigged against the individual content creator. When you go on YouTube and search certain things, there's a top news section. This means that they're rigging the algorithm. They're admitting to you, they're rigging the algorithm. So you see CNN and ABC and NBC and Washington Post and Fox News, before you see Anomaly or Paul Joseph Watson or Mark Dice or Jimmy Dore or Kyle Kalinske or anybody on the left and the right, they want you to see the mainstream media instead of just letting the algorithm decide who's got the best news and not. So they always have to use fringes. They say, oh my God, Alex Jones, Charlottesville, Russia, now we need to censor 10,000 people. And it's like, what are you talking about? I have nothing to do with the, these people. You know, so they, they use certain things. Oh, Alex Jones talked about this, so we gotta delete these videos. Why don't you just counter his argument instead of just making, oh my God, he said that. Why don't you put out a video and explain and debunk why it's wrong? There's many news networks that do that. I don't agree with very few things that the Young Turks say, but even the Young Turks will debate arguments on the right wing instead of saying to delete their video. So I respect people on the left wing that I don't agree with that are able to debate their way instead of uh, censoring and silencing people. So this is F Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube within the last couple of months admitting that they are shadow banning people and they are specifically, whether they mean to or not, targeting conservatives and Republicans. And it, and it is because, I don't wanna get too much into it, it's because they don't get it. They don't understand the tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of people who don't agree with them politically. I always say, I don't care if you think that way, I don't care if you think that way, but the fact that they think this way and they don't even think these people exist, they say you're fake, they say you're deplorable, they say you're a loser, they say you're a Russian bot. It's like they can't even fathom you exist in the first place. So they're trying, probably without even noticing, they're like, oh, I didn't even know I was shadow banning you. Well, it's because your whole argument and your whole like baseline is totally off. So to Twitter, Facebook, and, and YouTube, I hope that they really figure it out. I hope they start target, stop targeting and censoring conservatives uh, and also just anybody with a dissenting opinion because that's very, very troublesome. And especially with the election coming up, uh, it, it is bordering, I don't know if it's illegal or not, but I know Trump said he put out a tweet and said he's looking into it. At a certain point, uh, you might get caught in, in a legal battle because you have to understand, this is my problem with the election. Everybody wanted Hillary Clinton to win, okay? The celebrities wanted them to win. Facebook wanted her to win. Twitter wanted her to win. Google wanted her to win. Even over Bernie Sanders, Twitter admitted to censoring the DNC leaks hashtag, so they were cheating Bernie Sanders. They cheated Donald Trump. Everything is rigged against conservatives and, and Republicans. Everything's already rigged against them. So why in the world do you have to further rig it and rig it and shadow ban people? You're becoming very fascistic. For people who claim to want to stop fascism so much, 
you remind me the most of the fascists, the tech companies, the ones who can't acknowledge people's perspective and they just have to shut it down and censor and censor and censor. You're becoming everything that you claim you want to stop. And it's, it's bordering, you know, like what are you going to do during the midterms? What are you going to do during the election? Are you going to start kicking key voices off? I mean, that's similar to what societies have done. They've offed people intellects and scholars and leaders. They've done that to gain political advantage. So, you know, although they're not doing it to that extent, I mean, that's basically metaphorically what they're doing when it comes to the digital age and, and uh, atmosphere is they're trying to control it, censor it, and rig it 20 million different ways in their favor. And I also want to mention before I move on that Facebook and YouTube gave a combined tens of millions of dollars, upwards of like $100 million to CNN, to Fox News, and some of the worst people at Fox News, not even like Tucker Carlson. Uh, they're giving it to, you know, all the mainstream media, BuzzFeed, so it's like not only is everything rigged, but they're funding themselves. They're, oh yeah, who needs money? Anomaly who you know li get, goes off Patreon and donor box, barely makes enough to you know keep it moving. Or CNN, a multi-billion-dollar corporation who already has million-dollar salaries for all of their news analysts. Oh hmm, let's take Anomaly's money and let's give money to CNN. Like like they need more, your funding. Like oh CNN and Fox News really need millions of dollars from Facebook and YouTube. It's such a joke. They've become such parodies of themselves. And I really hope they figure it out soon because they're actually, even though they're controlling everything and even though they're rigging everything, it's that type of behavior that's scaring everybody away. So even though they're spending the most money, they're spending 10 times as much money. Anderson Cooper is getting millions of dollars from CNN. He's now getting, you know, upwards of millions of dollars. CNN's getting millions of dollars from, um, with Facebook and he's getting like 2,000 pe people per live stream. I'm here with 874 now. I have no money. I have one twentieth of the followers they have. I have no budget. I have no direct relationship with Facebook. I mean, they're rigging everything in their favor and they're still not producing results. It's kind of just getting pathetic and it's not working. It's not helping and it continuously backfires in their face. So overall, to wrap it up, I want to say beautiful job, Vice News. Thank you for doing a real report and caring about people, I will stand up for you on the left wing uh, when right wing people get crazy. You know, I do it all the time. And uh, you know, it's, it's, about, it's about content of character and it's about message, it's about truth, you know, and knowledge and, and discussion rather than opinion and censoring anybody outside your perspective. I don't wanna do that to anyone. I wanna have a conversation, discussion, or a debate to get to the truth because there's gonna be truth on both sides no matter how terrible someone is and you get the best uh, you know, perspective out of that. So thank you Vice for doing that. Uh, Twitter, YouTube, and Google, uh, whatever, Facebook, all of you guys, even though Google owns YouTube, but you know what I mean, just stop already, you know, stop hiring so many like rabid people who just, you know, make machine learning algorithms and censor people, just come on, think about it, sit down for a week, maybe take a vacation, come back, and then we'll realize, okay, you know, let's let Republicans and conservatives say their piece, they're not... They're not all racist, sexist, xenophobic, like neo-Nazis. Like there's very few of those and those you can kick off your platform, but you can't say everybody's that, say everyone's Russian and use it as justification to shadow ban people. I know what you're doing. I've said this for a year that they're gonna use the Russian narrative to continue to censor people and they've just done that. So once again, you know, I'm just seeing, I see their little games. So that's why I avoid it.